Okay, so this is going to be the last day of review. Um, we're going to start with this exponential problem. And you can see on this exponential problem that we have our curve and it's going up. And it looks like it starts at this point 4. And then it looks like we're going up very, very quickly. And... Um, it's hard to tell exactly how quickly we are going up, but if you can look, um, if you took 4 and times it by 2, your next point that you'd get would be 8. And the reason I know that is uh, if you draw a line up 1, which that's at 1, it hits 8. So if you remember before for this exponential formula, the exponential formula is y equals a, b, x, where a is your start and b is your growth. So because that is true, 4 is my start and 2 is my growth because I'm going I'm multiplying this by 2 to get to the next point you can see it probably a little bit easier with like in between points like you start at 2 there and you times it by 2 to get 4 I start at 1 here I times it by 2 to get to 1 so you can kind of see these dots as we go up that we're multiplying by 2 all the rest of them don't make sense like we definitely didn't start at 10 this one starts at 4 but if it times this by 0.5 it actually makes a downward shape, so that can't be right. And we won't have any negatives ever. Okay, let's try the next one. So we have to convert inches per second into miles per hour. So this is where we're going to start our chain of things. So we have 88 inches over one hour. Now what I really want is I want inches to change to miles and I want hours, or whoops, <laughs> I want inches to change to miles, and I want one hour, that was actually seconds, so let's fix that thing right there. There we go. Um, and I want seconds to change to hours. So here's what we're going to end up doing. If I have inches on top, to be able to cancel that out, I need inches on bottom, so that this will cancel with this and then I can pick a new unit. Well the only unit that I know how to convert is 12 inches is one foot. So my new unit on top is feet so far. However I didn't want feet I wanted miles so we're gonna do 5,280 feet and now these can cancel and that's gonna be one mile. Now the unit that I have on top is the unit that I want. Now we got to do the same thing with seconds. So if I have seconds on the bottom, to cancel it, I need seconds on the top. And the only second conversion I know is there's 60 seconds in a minute. So I'm going to cross out seconds. And I know this is in one minute. And then the last conversion that I know is that in 60 minutes, and again, I have to put that on top, so it'll cancel out. You're going to get one hour. And then we just go through and we multiply our fractions. So first I'm going to multiply the top, which would be eight t 88 times 1 times 1 times 60 times 60. And that's going to give me that big number. And then... I'm going to multiply out my bottom, which would be uh, 1 times 12 times 5,280. And I guess I could do times 1 and 1, but that really doesn't matter. And then I get that number there. And then, since we have those numbers on top of each other, we're going to divide them. So that would be 316800 divided by 63360. And that is going to give me 5. So we're going 5 miles per hour. Let's look at the next one. In this, we have to figure out how much Dazon is going to make after 15 years of depositing in a bank. And so when you think through this one and you're reading through this one, you want to remember kind of 
um, how this works. So we want to do 5,000 or 500 and we want to times it. But we don't want to times it by 8% because he doesn't have 8%. You also want to think what percent of the 500 he has, which is 100. So instead of having 8%, he actually has 108%. And then he's going to do that for 15 years. So our equation becomes 500 times 1.08 to the 15th. And then when we do that, we're going to get around $1,586. Let's try the next one. In this problem, we have Kyra buying a boat, and now it's going to depreciate by 15%. So again, Kyra doesn't only own 15%, like that's how much it's depreciating. She owned 100% of the boat, but since it's depreciating, it's going down by 15%, which means now she only owns 85% of the original boat. And so what we would do to get that equation is we would do 12,000, and since it's go she's only, every single year, she's only owning 85% now, of the original value and we want that to happen for eight years so we're going to plug that into our calculator and what we're going to end up getting is three thousand two hundred and this rounds up to about seventy so C is our closest answer Let's try the next one on this we have to find our side of or our last side of our X. So if you see this, this looks like a right triangle. They didn't draw that in, but it really is a right triangle, which means we know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which we know that 5 squared plus B squared equals 15 squared, which means we know that 25 plus B squared equals, um, let's see what 15 squared is. 225 and then I can subtract 25 from both sides and I can get B squared is equal to 200 and then we can square root and figure out what that answer would be as a decimal before we square root I'm gonna put that in simplest radical form just for a little bit of extra practice um, the square root of 200 can be broken down into 100 and 2 which would be 10 radical 2 and that would be it in simplest radical form. If you want it as a decimal approximation, just take your square root and put 200 in it, and we get that's about 14.1 as our final answer. Let's try our next one. So for this, it says find the max for this equation. If you remember, any time that we have to find the max, we need to do negative b over 2a which means we're going to do negative 32 over 2 times negative 4, which is going to give us negative 32 over negative 8, which is going to divide down to be 4. And that is our x value, which means a is our, going to be our correct answer. But we're going to double check to see if that's really the right answer. So if you have an x value, how you find a y value is you plug it into this thing. To save me time, I'm just going to plug that whole thing in my calculator. So I'm going to say negative 4, uh, 4 squared plus 32 times 4 plus 7, and that is going to give me 71. Let's try the next one. So for this thing, they want an answer. I can see that I have a quadratic, and when I have a quadratic, um, there's multiple ways to solve it. We could complete the square, factor, whoops, I square root, factor, complete the square, or quadratic formula. I'm going to use the quadratic formula because it has a number in front of its um, x squared. So we're going to do negative b, which would be 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 5, all over 2a, 
which 2 times a would be 6. And now once we have that, we're going to keep working it out a little bit. So I'm going to have 4 plus or minus the square root of, and we're just going to put that whole thing in our calculator so we don't mess it up. That's 76 over 6. And now from there, we're going to take that square root of 76, which is going to give me 8.7. So we're going to get 4 plus 8.7 over 6 and 4 minus 8.7 over 6. This one, if I do that, we do 4 plus 8.7 and then divide that by 6. That gives me 2.1. And now we'll do the minus side. So I'm going to do 4 minus 8.7 divided by 6, which is going to give me negative 0.78, which that is very, very close to A. So A is our answer. Let's go to our next one. This one's the, what percentage of students that walk to school are boys? So these, all these people walk to school. So I, it would be nice to know the total number of students, and it would be nice to know the total number of boys. So I can do that quickly. There's 75 boys, and there's 85 girls. So there would be 160 students in total. You could do the same thing over here, but I don't really need those pieces of information. So I need to find how many total percent of boys walk, so that would be 75 over 160, or about 47%. Let's try the next one. It says both bar graphs show the number of customers complaints that Company 1 and Company 2 have received since they've opened for business. Which graph could be misleading? Why? A is misleading because it does not start at zero. B is misleading because it's not accurate. Well, it's, it's not true that B is not accurate because it literally is the same graph as A. The only difference is A doesn't start at zero. So it looks like A or Company 2 receives a lot more complaints than Company 1, even though it's actually this. Like, <laughs> that's what it is. It's 22 and 29. So this one just received seven more complaints. So it's definitely misleading because it doesn't start at zero. The other kind of misleading thing that you generally get is the pie graphs not adding up. Let's try the next one. Okay, let's solve this. So the first thing that I would do is I would subtract 6x from both sides. That's going to cancel out on both sides. I'm going to get 1 equals negative 8. If I get 1 equals negative 8, I know that's not true. So it's no solution. Try the next one. We need to convert miles per hour now into inches per second. So I'm going to say 3 miles over 1 hour. And again, we want the miles to go to seconds. So to cancel out the miles, I'm going to put 1 mile on the bottom. And I know that's 5,280 feet. And now I know that uh, there's one foot. I should be canceling these out as I go just to make sure I've done it right. In 12 inches. And now we can see that we have our unit on top that we want. Now we're going to try the other one. I know that in one hour. I have 60 minutes so that I know the hours will cancel. And in this, I know in one minute I have 60 seconds. And that's going to give me my correct unit on bottom. And I cancel out all other units. So the two units we have left is inches and seconds, which is what we want. We're then going to put it in our calculator. So I'm going to do 3 times 5,280 times 12, times 1, times 1. And then I'm going to do 1 times 1 times 1 
times 60 times 60. And then we're going to divide these things to see how much they are. And we're going to get 52.8 inches per second, or that is really close to 53. Let's try the last problem. We need to choose the scatter plot that fits the best one. So I'm actually just going to draw in the line of best fit and see which one of these it matches. Well, it definitely starts at 10, but all of them start at 10. And let's just look at my slope. It looks as this rough sketch of my slope that you go down one and over one every single time. If I could draw. But it looks like I'm going down one and over one, which that would be B. And you can see how that would be the line of best fit because it goes in between. It doesn't hit the most dots, but it goes in between the most dots and it's the closest to every dot so that every dot is pretty close to that line. If you have any questions, let me know. This is the last day of review. So all of these 60 problems that you've kind of been through are going to be very similar to things you see on the test. So if you get stuck with anything, please let me know.